if you're serious about being a story creator, and by that I mean anyone who wants to make a short story, a novel, a, a picture book, a comic, a, a play, a, a movie, a graphic novel, any of those sorts of things, then the very first thing you need to think about is how you think. This video focuses on the importance of attitude in creating stories. Hello, I'm John Heffernan, an Australian author with national and international awards. I've actually been a farmer for most of my working life, but over the last 20 odd years I've published more than 50 books, both in my own name and under a pseudonym. I can honestly say that it's all been great, and I wouldn't have missed any of it for anything. But now, with age creeping up on me like a thief in the night, I've decided it's time to pass on some of the lessons I've learned, some of the tricks and skills I've picked up along the way. I want to help others create their stories, I don't pretend to have all the answers by any means, no way, but I think I have something to offer. In this session I'll help you create what I call a head for tails, an attitude, a mindset whereby you come to see life in terms of stories, tales, narratives, scenarios, etc. I'll map out six steps to help you develop your head for tails. Okay, let's do it then. The first thing you must do is release the storyteller in you. And don't give me any crap about not having a storyteller in you, because I bet you do. Most of us do. You see, we humans are inveterate storytellers. We have been right from the very start. What is cave art if it's not a primitive form of image-based storytelling? And we've hung on to that story mode ever since. We tell big stories like religion and politics. We make up little stories like the ones we tell to ourselves and to others to boost our ego or rationalise our behaviour. And we invent narratives for everything else in between. Stories are us. So come on, give it a go. What's to lose? The next step is to start collecting story ideas. To do that, you have to let your mind wander like a dog off its leash, sniffing out ideas. Grab whatever pops into your head and get it down in a few words, a sentence or two at the very most. Daydream. Drift off into the never-never, where ideas float like plankton. You know, a very, very successful author friend of mine once told me that the best place he found ideas was out the window. <laughs> but do keep this in mind. When you're seeking ideas, make sure you chill. Make sure you take a relaxed, non-critical attitude at this early stage. You know, some of the best stories have come from the craziest ideas. So don't start out by vetting your ideas, by judging them, or, or, or you'll kill the flow before it gets the go. Let your mind fly off on tangents, down side roads, up dirt tracks, along alleyways, over a cliff, down a rabbit hole, and ignore the stop signs, the go back signs, the wrong direction signs. There are no wrong directions at this stage. Get that into your head early on. Step three is a little exercise that I think will help you develop your head for tails a bit further. Do this for a couple of weeks at least. Each morning, when you wake up, roll over and grab a pen and pencil or, or an iPad or an iPhone or whatever works best for you and write for two minutes, okay? Don't vet, don't censor, just write. Whatever comes into your head, no need for sentences, just words will do. You know, stream of consciousness, anything like that. However raw, it doesn't matter. Do it for two minutes. No more. Now, it will take a bit to get going with this. Your critical side will just keep trying to police what gets through. But keep at it. 
because after a week or two you'll find that two very interesting things happen. First, you'll find that what comes out is from deeper inside, you know, things that are part of your inner psyche, if you like. The very things that you need to access if you're going to be a real story creator. The second thing that will happen is that you'll find it impossible to write just for two minutes. So don't. Let it go. Let it flow. Let it grow. These two things are signs that you're beginning to develop a real head for tales. Your inner mind is venturing out on its own paths, free from those inner thought police. Yeah, so celebrate it. Step four has to do with the real world. Yeah, never lose sight of the real world. Why? Because a major part of developing a head for tales is opening your mind to the rich source of story material that's out there in the real world. Look, there are characters, scenes, scenarios, action, suspense, humour, and, and so on. <laughs> Much of it is stranger than fiction, and all of it is yours to play with. Start with the evening news and see the stories in it, the human stories. Look at photographs and see the narratives behind them. Ditto for paintings in galleries all over the world. Sit back and be absorbed by music and feel the stories that are in the notes. Look at the old woman you pass in the street, the old man. Trace the stories etched in the lines on their faces. See the busker, the skateboarder, the businessman, the beggar, the barmaid, the barista. Observe humanity. That's what it's all about. Observe humanity. We are literally riddled with tales, and we always have been. After you work at this for a while, you'll come to step five. Yeah, you'll find that another truly exciting thing happens. There will come a point when you almost don't have to search for story ideas anymore. The ideas just seem to come looking for you, unsolicited, uncalled for. It can feel very strange, as though something mystical is going on, but in fact, all that's really happening is that your mind is becoming storified, able to effortlessly trawl that narrative plankton at a subconscious level. I like to think of it as thinking without thinking. It's my way of staring out the window. Get the picture? I hope so. Because step six is when you need to start focusing a bit. Once you've honed the mental skills of effortlessly detecting and generating ideas, and you have a critical mass of those little story gems, it's time to start filtering your ideas, assessing their potential, looking for the special ones or combinations of ideas that grab you, that inspire you, that light the fire inside you. Take your time here, because what you'll be doing is committing to a story idea, an idea that could mean quite a lot of work, especially if it's going to be uh, a novel in the end or a series or anything like that. You want, you want it to be the right idea. You, you don't want to discover after a month or so of research and planning, etc., that the idea doesn't really stack up. So you'll need to ask yourself a few questions here. Questions like these. Does this idea excite me? Do I feel passionate about it? Will it give me a story that is all mine? A story that I own? If the answers are yes, then it's a no-brainer whatsoever. Because, well, because... Let me put it this way. Oh yeah, a story that you own. You see this treasure you can measure in a story that you own, that you've created all alone, homegrown, excavated from that inner mental zone, a story that you've grown. No, 
So open up that treasure chest, feel the zest, take the quest, climb the crest, ride up to the eagle's nest, go on, invest into a story that you own. Because there's power to devour in how a tale is told. So be bold, go for gold, and launch into a tail. Hoist the sail, ride the gale, chase the whale, sail the seas, hail the Caesars, get the keys to all that pleases, and squeeze as much as you can from that story in hand. Cause what you've got to understand is there's glory in that story, in the characters you meet. Let me repeat, in the characters you meet. So greet the king, meet the Kong, you'll move among the throng of groovy dudes that belong on in pages, that engage us, or enrage us, or amaze us. Cause there are good dudes, rude dudes, rad dudes, bad dudes, sad dudes, glad dudes, hey, totally freaking evil seeking mad dudes. Dudes to surprise, dudes who open up your eyes, dudes who tell lies, even dudes in disguise. Because the sky's the limit when you nail it in a tale. So go ahead, feel the need, get the creed, do that deed, plant the seed, watch it breed and watch it grow, yo. Cause what you gotta know is there's treasure beat your measure in them words that are written, written. Hey, go on, get bitten, be smitten, it's only fitting. It's only fitting you get bitten by them. What's that a written? Oh, yeah, only you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Get the picture? Okay. That's kind of it for now. I hope you got something out of this. And I hope that you will work at developing your head for tales. You'll find it, believe me, a very key aspect in story creation. I will have a raft of sessions dealing with how to transform your chosen story idea into a finished product down the track. So please check out those. And um, I will also have some other sessions that are purely about having fun. <laughs> Creative play. That is honestly a crucial aspect of creating story content. Okay, for now, well, it's just goodbye. Oh, a bientôt. Arrivederci. Farewell. And, um, yee-haw. Right, right. It's only fitting you get written by them. Was that a written...